Hi there again everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks and this uh, is going to be an overview of the technical specifications of this OTW Type 23 RC submarine build-up. All right, here we have sort of a general overview of all of the components of the model. Obviously, we've got the hull uh, in the background there. It's about 1 25th scale, just a beautiful size. Uh, we've got a battery compartment, the main watertight cylinder, propel, which is basically liquid air for the ballast system, and we have our high-tech six-channel radio system. So let's, uh, let's walk through how all of this goes together and then uh, in a separate video shortly thereafter we're going to throw this thing in the water and show you how it works. Okay, access to the hull is really straightforward. We'll go into the closures uh, when we button everything up. Here's a really quick look at the uh, interior setup. I've coated everything on the inside with uh, some nice thick black uh, bed liner paint uh, just mostly for aesthetics more than anything else. Uh, in the bottom you can see the ballast uh, pink foam for flotation and then in the back here we've got the business end of things we've got all of our linkages we've got our rudder uh, linkages we have our um, we have our bow plane linkages and then we finally have our rear dive plane linkages and then of course our main uh, prop shaft and that spins really nice and freely. This is really really important uh, not to have any binding in the drive line. Uh, we'll note on the rudder was something that I am pretty excited about. The um, linkage is all run through a series of chains and sprockets and that keeps all of the linkages hidden so that you don't see anything outside the model. So let's talk about installation of the main cylinder. This is a three and a half inch uh, d and &E Miniatures watertight cylinder. Uh, older kind of technology, but certainly tried uh, and proven. You can see it's got the extended propel um, chamber in here, the reservoir for your liquid air. Basically make sure that you've got a lot of capacity in there, maximum number of blows before you need to come back in. So for installation, it's really straightforward. All we're going to do is uh, just kind of nestle this in place. Uh, I'm going to connect the rear dive planes now, just because it's a little easier to get that snapped together. And the other thing we need to do at this point is install the drive shaft. And we're just going to put that in place. Drop everything down nice and easy. Put it up against the back and it's nestled, ready to go. I'm going to connect our linkages. Again, those just snap in place. This is the tube for testing the watertight cylinder's uh, seal. So you would put the cylinder in the water, uncap the hose, blow into it, and look for bubbles. I just keep it on there, uh, but all you're going to want to do is just tuck this off to the side. To install the hole down on the rear, you take this brass clip, slip it in underneath the receptacles on the uh, each side. And that basically holds the rear in. And then for the front, there is a stainless steel bolt, and that just bolts right into the center through the, uh, the bulkhead there. All you need to do is use your fingers, tighten it down, and there you go. Everything is completely locked in place, uh, completely solid. You can lift the model up by the cylinder. It's all locked down. So again, I'm just gonna tuck that tube out of the way. Um, I am also going to connect the rear main power lead. These are watertight connections. 
snap that together, tuck it out of the way, and we are completely ready to go on the aft end of the boat. All right, moving to the front of the boat, uh, I've got a lithium polymer battery. It's a, a five amp capacity by Tenergy. All you're gonna wanna do is, um, actually the easiest thing to do is connect the power lead to the front bulkhead through this Dean's connector. Slip the battery into the compartment, tuck the lead in, and you'll notice there's also a 15 amp fuse in there. That's very important to make sure that if there's any shorts, you don't damage any of the equipment that you've got uh, in the cylinder. You'll notice you're gonna to want to line up these two marks on the cylinder to make sure that uh, it is oriented properly. And with that, your watertight cylinder for your battery compartment is ready for installation. Now you notice on the battery compartment, I've got two sets of magnets on the uh, watertight bulkheads. Those are gonna pair up to a series of magnets in the hull. So you just drop your cylinder in place. It matches up to the bulkheads and everything is installed, secure and ready to go. All right, now that we've got everything installed in the model, it's time to prep it for the pond. And in order to do that, we're gonna to need to fill up this pressure vessel with this liquid air. In order to do that, we're gonna need uh, the adapter, the supply can adapter. You're gonna make sure that you open up the valve and then you're gonna screw it on the top of the canister nice and tight. Screw down the valve and you'll hear it click once the air pressure releases to the valve in the adapter. There we go. Okay, so now that we have the battery compartment installed, what we need to do is turn our transmitter on and then connect the main power lead to the cylinder and that powers the model on. Looking good, I can see some response from the servos there. I'm just gonna do a few commands on here. We got some rudder, some dive planes, throttle control, and our ballast. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fill our propel vessel. Now, what I recommend is the use of gloves and safety goggles. Now, the reason for this is because the liquid air, when it's expelled, from this cylinder is exceptionally cold and can cause frostbite. Okay, in order to fill the reservoir for your liquid air, what you're gonna do is press down on the top uh, firmly so that there's no leaks. You're gonna hear the fluid going into the chamber and then you're gonna take your transmitter and you're gonna initiate a, a couple of blow cycles a few seconds apart. So once you do that, you've made sure that you've got the maximum amount of propellant in your reservoir. Okay, now that everything is set to go inside, the model's powered up, all of the linkages are connected, we've tested them, uh, we filled up our uh, liquid air for our ballast system, now we just need to put everything back together again, get the upper hull in place, just set the top in place, and we got two bolts, one goes in the front, one goes in the back. And these are both thumb screws. I've designed them so that you do not need to have tools, uh, although there is an Allen head uh, in the top of it so you can use a tool if you want to. That's going to hold everything down nice and tight and firm. And what you're going to do is take the rigging, attach it to the magnetic clip at the front, and you're all set to go. We're ready for the pond. So there you go, everyone. This is the OTW 125th scale Type 23 Coastal Submarine. The only thing left to do now is drop it in the pond and set her out for her maiden voyage. Look for that in my next video. Thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next time.